three, two, one. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. Baltimore County Public Schools and offices continue to be closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting may be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Building and Contracts Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, would you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Ms. Hen? Present. Ms. Rowe? Present. Ms. Mack? Yes. And Mr. McMillian? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Slade, would you please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mr. Bersades. Daryl Williams. Mary Boswell McComas. Present. Michael Dickerson. Present. Margaret Ann Howie. Maria Lowry. Brian Scriven. Present. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Michael Zarchin. Present. Christina Byers. Raquel Jones. George Roberts. Renard Adams. Barbara Burnop. Present. Pete Dixit. Present. Heather Lagerman. Present. Charles Patillo. Present. Catherine Parandazzi. Present. George Saris. Present. Melissa Wisted. Present. Meryl Plate. Present. Anne Rungfarg and Saroon. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Jess Grimm, Director of Transportation. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Slate. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to present contracts one through five. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. And at the outset, I just wanted to indicate that uh, we will are withdrawing item four, which is contract CWA 104-21, hearing examiners and other legal services. And that will be modified 
and presented to the board at its next regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Saris. You're so welcome. Uh, so the first item we have uh, this evening is JNI 768-16, resources for students with cognitive disabilities. This contract modification will provide for comprehensive and modified resources for students with cognitive disabilities who take the state alternate assessments for the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $122,575, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $400. $32,575 with one awarded vendor approved by the board in June 2016. Okay, thank you. Questions, board members? Um, I have a question, Ms. Hen. Yes, Ms. Mack. Mr. Saris, um, I believe this contract was discussed at curriculum and instruction, but it seems like a while ago. Is there someone on the call that can provide more specificity about what this is exactly providing? Yeah, I believe either Dr. Boswell McComas or Dr. Pirandozzi could. Yeah, um, so I'll actually have uh, Dr. Pirandozzi share more details, but you're right, Ms. Mack, and thank you as always. Um, for always making sure we connect everything. So this, these were previously approved at curriculum committee in a previous year. So Dr. Pirandozzi will be able to share with you more specifically the materials and, and why uh, we're at the point where we need to modify it uh, given our current situation. So thank you and thanks thank Dr. Pirandozzi. Mm -hmm. Hi, good afternoon and thank you for allowing me the opportunity. This is our um, system in which we use to support students that are require maximum support, some support in that learning process, and then students that have the potential to learn for some independence. They are our students that are on state alternative assessments. And what occurred back in March when we moved towards that virtual setting, we needed to increase the number of teachers accessing the services to provide that independent virtual learning for them. And this is called Unique Learning Systems, and it's referred to as News to You as well. So these are all of the five grade bands and for life skills and learning for all of our content areas and academic standard based requirements for that meet our federal um, requirement learning centers for our students that are on the alternative standard. So this um, addresses some of their content, their skills and everything that address the skills and concepts and scope and sequence for their lessons. And with this, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. In addition to their resources, additional resources for learning activities. And would this predominantly be our students at our separate day schools? They are in not only our separate day schools, but um, what we refer to as our fowls and cows and regional programs that are self contained okay. programs that are at several of our middle schools, high schools, and um, elementaries. Okay, thank you. That makes it more clear. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Are there any qu other questions? Okay, hearing none, okay. thank you. Next item, Mr. Next, Mr. next item we have is JMI-625-17, Instructional Materials. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of classroom instructional materials and educational products. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $500,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $2 million with 17 awarded vendors approved by the board in March 2017. Okay. Questions? I do have a question, Ms. Hen. Ms. Mack? Dr. McComas, is this to another contract that we discussed in curriculum and instruction? And am I correct in saying that what we are purchasing here is predominantly manipulatives? Yeah, this is, we have this also uh, having already been an approved contract is one that we present. And I'm sorry, Ms. Mack, I just don't remember exactly when we did. Um, and it's hard to go back right now and, and research that 
update. These are materials, and I'll have Dr. Wissett speak to it. They're materials for um, early childhood uh, programs, and so I'm going to invite Dr. Wissett just to provide more details around that so I don't misspeak. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, um, these are hands on materials that different vendors um, might have instructional materials or educational projects uh, products such as art materials, puzzles, hands on um, learning and things like that. And we um, it, it's actually the vendors are used not only by central office, but also school based staff. So we have spent um, a large portion of the contract through opening up um, early childhood programs. So both in special education and general education, our preschool and pre-K programs. We've used it in our ABC, Alanda Brandwine Center and the Campfield and Hawthorne Judy Centers. And then schools will spend on this contract as well when they want to replenish materials in any of their early childhood programs. Thank you very much, Dr. Wisted. I, I do have a question to the point you just made. If a school is going to buy from this contract, it will come out of this amount of money and not their schoolhouse budget. Would that be a correct statement? Well, so the what's on the contract is the spending authority. They would still be using their schoolhouse budget, but it spends against this contract, which is why we need to increase the spending authority. Right. If I may just for a moment help um, with that concept again, the spending authority is the, the concept of we as a whole organization, whether it's a central office or a school, has permission to spend up to this amount of money with this vendor. That, that we can use dollars from central offices or dollars from school budgets. It's all this, the school um, budget and how it's put out in separate budgets. But the authority just is like the cap of the maximum that we as an organization could spend until we ask for permission to spend more. I hope that helped a little bit and didn't confuse anything. Thank no, you. No, it, it helped. Thank you. Th You're that's welcome. all I have. Thank you, Ms. Hand. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. You. Any other questions, board members? OK. Thank you. Hearing none. Next item, please. OK, the next item, JNI 761-16 meeting space. Uh, this is contract modification will provide for the continued use uh, of flexible space for large and small group meetings, training, uh, and other assemblies at times when schools or offices are either not available or not large enough to accommodate the, uh, the attendees. Approval is requested to extend the contract for six months with nine awarded vendors approved by the board in January 2016. And um, you'll note that uh, obviously this year we have uh, spent very little money because we do not meet. Um, but uh, based on the premise that at some point uh, we may be able to resume those types of gatherings. Uh, we just wanted to extend the term of this contract uh, before we before it expires and we rebid it just in the event that sometime this spring uh, it, it may be able to be used. OK, thank you, Mr. Saris. That was my question about. Um, so this is this request extends the term it doesn't change the authority. And right. I wanted to ask how this contract is currently being used, but you you read my mind. You're answering my questions before I have the chance to ask them, so thank you. And that is how we are using this. And I see that we've only spent 23,000 um, on this contract to date. So um, that was my question, how we are using this given the pandemic and what is the need for it? given that we aren't meeting in person. Right, and I just can't see far enough into the future to know exactly what uh, lies ahead, uh, but we just wanted to uh, extend it in the event uh, it is needed. So would this not be an, an opportune time to rebid it since we aren't using it? And it seems like there would be low risk in, I guess, a gap if this yeah, we're 
we're rebidding. We're in the process of doing that now. It's usually about a three to four month process. So, um, so in May, our our goal is to bring you the replacement contract. Okay. And I know that the board um, previously approved this, but it's it's been some time. Actually, this was before my time on the board. Can someone speak to the types of events or gatherings that this is used for? Um, we have schools with large space meeting spaces, and particularly now that our, our schools are not in use, what what this may be used for? Um, what types yeah, of gatherings? Um, uh, if uh, Dr. Lagerman would like to comment, otherwise I'll I'll start off uh, by indicating that um, lots of professional development that takes place uh, during the school day cannot really occur in school buildings. So you'll see, for example, that one of the vendors is uh, Loyola University campus in Timonium. Uh, as well as Morgan State University. Uh, there are events like um, uh, the... Uh, Our Principals Leadership Development principals, and Assistant Principals yeah. Leadership Development, anything that requires all of our administrators, uh, a building, a school building can't hold. So that's one of those and some of the other larger symposium. Morgan is the Equity Symposium. Right. And I think uh, Martin's is the site of the state of the schools. And uh, principals leadership development event, as well. Which yeah. we've not had, uh, obviously, this year. Okay. So the plans then for these, I guess, given that we are being asked to approve an extension between January or the end of January through June, is that the the need for this would be that we would resume these events in person is that yes it was just in case that is the case because it'd be um because it would end it would end right. the end of january and we would be resuming these in person if we were yes we would need to have contracts available right and if i may just miss um Hen, hi. Hi. Um, just, <laughs> just, and uh, forgive me, uh, Ms. Lagerman, I'm just trying to be supportive here uh, as I know you're uh, stepping in and uh, stepping up these days for us. Um, just Ms. Hen and everyone, just to remember that again, this is kind of that authority, like we're asking permission right. to be able to. It does not mean that we absolutely will need to be able to do that, but, um, you know, all of us are optimistic and hopeful that between the vaccine, um, and as we move through um, that the metrics will come down and we will we all want to return to in person opportunities. And so this is really a, to be prepared and optimistic. But again, authority doesn't mean that we are, are absolutely going to do it, but just that we have the permission to do it as we need to. So I hope that was a little helpful. Thank you. Thank you. And and I understand the authority um, and what that means. But thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for those at home. Um, board members, other questions? And thank you, Ms. Lagerman, and welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. So the last item that we have is KSH-305-16 school bus routes or routes regular and summer. Uh, this contract modification will provide for the continued transportation of students by private contractors or the regular uh, and summer for the regular and summer school year. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $10 million, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $72.5 million, with eight awarded vendors approved by the board in June 2016. Okay. Mr. Sarris, could you give us some um, background on why this increase? is required? Uh, yes. Uh, the uh, contract was, we had planned to rebid this and and award it last spring. Um, and so I believe last January we came before the board and increased uh, the spending authority by just 
the $2.5 million from the original $60 million to get us through the spring. And then, of course, in the spring, uh, everything changed. And um, so uh, even though we've not been transporting students, we've still been uh, paying our contractors under uh, an MOU, which allows them to stay in business and make their debt payments and so forth until such time as as they return to full service. Um, and so we've uh, we have a, a bid that's been uh, completed and will come to the board, I believe, January, uh, January or February. Um, and so in order to get us uh, through the remainder of the school year, uh, we just want to make sure that we have the spending authority uh, to do that uh, with the current vendors we have in place. Uh, given that we're still not sure what the school opening date will be and the, the cost we currently spent, um, you'll see there uh, about 2.1 million at the time this contract was prepared. We made a large payment in December, and so our year-to-date expenditures are just under $4 million, which uh, consists of that uh, payments under that MOU. Um, the, the new contract specifications uh, will uh, include some provisions for these type of maintenance payments to vendors uh, in the event in the event there are future types of disasters, pandemics, uh, situations like we're experiencing that will help them uh, stay in business because over the years we've come to rely more uh, on the contractors. We've gone from about 90 routes to about 140 routes. So uh, essentially a 50% or more increase in the need uh, for these services. So we want to be positioned uh, for when school opens and uh, to have everybody ready and available. Thank you. And, and I understand and, and had that background, so that, that was helpful. Um, I know we had been using contracted services more especially with our challenges in in getting drivers um so that that is helpful do you happen to know um percent wise how much we had exceeded our anticipated expenditures on this contract prior to the um, um shutdown yeah i think that when this contract was developed, the uh, the estimate was about uh, 12 or 13 million dollars a year in annual expenses, and we have approached 17 million dollars uh, in the last two full school years, and so um, the the average spending that you'll see is is not indicative of the most recent trends that upon which our uh, our budget is based and on which this next contract will be based when it comes to the board in uh, I guess in February now that I think about it yeah would it be possible for the board to receive this information broken down in a little bit different way to to see year um, and an overview of expenditures year to year so that we can get a better picture of of our spending on transportation i guess pre and post um, i yeah post we'll all work with the superintendent um to make that information available uh, I don't, I can, other than what I've shared, I don't think I'm going to have anything this evening. No, I, I, I just think it would be 
helpful in telling the full story that may not be obvious in looking at these numbers and to stakeholders who may not understand why we're increasing our spending on transportation when schools are closed, why we've, we're exceeding the authority. Um, I understand and thank you for that explanation, but I think sure. it would be helpful for the rest of the board to, to have that explanation and also to see the trends and to be able to um, have that complete story. Okay, um, Madam we'll, Chair, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with a weekly update thank and you provide very much. to the board. Yeah, thank yes, you. Madam. Board members, other questions? Ms. Han, I have a quick question. Yes, Ms. Matt. Um, Mr. Saris, what percent of our students are, uh, let's say 113,000 students are transported by private contractors versus BCPS uh, employed bus drivers? I'm gonna well, hope Dr. Well, let's Graham defer is to, uh, yeah, uh, I'm Dr. Sorry. Graham or Ms. Batilla. We'll, we'll defer to Dr. Grimm or Mr. Patillo. They can answer that, Ms. Mack. Thank you. Uh, so good Thank afternoon, Ms. Mack. Uh, this is Jess Grimm. Um, we really don't route um, in that way. I, I couldn't give you an exact number of that because um, because of the way that 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 our buses are routed. Um, however, I, I could give you a breakdown or, or could prepare as part of the weekly update. Um, some data from years past on um, the approximate number of, of riders that utilize contracted services versus our BCPS buses. That would be very helpful. Thank you. To, to, to give you just a sense, um, Mr. Saris indicated we do, we run at the present time about between 150 and 160 uh, contracted routes. Um, we have somewhere around, uh, I believe it's 750 total routes that we run. And um, it's also important to note that um, our, our contracted routes um, vary widely by area of the county. Um, we've got some contractors that, uh, that provide service in very densely populated areas of the county and others in, in uh, more rural areas. So it, it really depends to kind of bear it down by the number of students they service. Um, may not also paint the full picture. So we can also share with you um, how we make some of the decisions about contracted routes versus BCPS routes. Um, it's also important to note that some of our contractors as they bid on routes, bid on them or um, wish to provide service that are uh, closer to their their depots. So it also okay. depends where our bus contractors are located around the county as far as which routes they service for us. Okay, Mr. Grip, thank you very much. That's very helpful. Mr. Saris, I do have one follow-up question. You stated that um, we, I believe you stated we have paid $4 million in payments per an MOU that we had with these bus companies so that we wouldn't lose their service and they could stay in business and be available to service us when our kids go back to school. What percentage of the total monies that we typically spend with them is this four million? So this is about uh, half of what we would typically spend. There's a formula that we put in place which uh, which we modeled after um, some of the other regional school systems because uh, most of them already had such an agreement in place, uh, unlike ourselves. Um, and it's it's based on their capital costs. Um, and obviously we deduct fuel and and mileage. Um, and uh, ends, it ends up all together being around 50%. So at, we would normally spend, you know, eight million, have spent $8 million by this point in the year and working our way towards that 
17 million dollars that we would have budgeted. If you'll see last year, we only spent 15.2 million, but that was for basically three quarters of a of a school year. So it would have been much more if we had not um, lowered those payments accordingly under this MOU. So a full service year would have been much more than what we spent last year. OK, I think I, I, I'll send in my I might have another question. I'll send that in. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. Thank you. Four members, do I? Yes, Ms. Rowe? Ms. Hunt, I have a question. So I need someone to just clarify that I'm understanding what has being, been said here on this contract. Um, it sounds like, Mr. Sheriff, that what you're saying is that we are not saving money because we are not transporting students. In fact, we are actually spending more money than we would have if we were transporting students because we are paying our contractors to stay in business. Is that what you're saying or have I misunderstood this? Uh, that's not what I have intended to say. Um, I think that last year uh, we saved over $2 million by not transporting students. Um, and by paying half of what we otherwise would have had school been in session. Okay, so why are we spending more on transportation than we would if school were in session and we are transporting students? I, I don't believe that that's not what I intended to say. So we're not, we're spending less last year and this year as a result of schools being closed. OK, so why do we need an increased spending authority? Because uh, this contract has been extended once already and we are not sure. Well, I could tell you right now that we're within $2 million of our limit and whether schools reopen or not, uh, we will exceed the spending authority. Okay. I believe in the interest simple. of time, we're going to need to submit additional questions in writing. Um, we are four minutes over as of this point. So Ms. Rowe and Ms. Mack, if you have additional questions, um, this may be discussed further in open session. Um, or we may need follow up um, after the fact. So um, I think we'll need to to return to this. So thank you, Mr. Saris. You're at welcome. At this point, um, board members, do I have a motion to recommend items one through three and item five to the full board for approval? So moved, Mac. May I have a second? Second row. Thank you. Ms. Slade, may I have a roll call vote? Yes, Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. And Mr. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. The motion carries. Committee members, is there any um, further business? Since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.